All right. It's 9.30. That means it's time. It's time. Uh -huh. Wake us up. <laughs> pictures, whatever, and then at the end, check in on Facebook, that's uh, uh, Route 21 Southwest, and make sure that you use hashtags, use hashtags, hey, what's happening guys? You missed the on time drawing. I did, I know, you know what, I won last time, so I know, okay. the last time you were here, which was how long ago? It was a little while. Uh, I almost forgot what you looked like. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. Check, check in on Facebook, use your hashtags. All right, so Rev Up training coming up tomorrow is Rev Up 12, which completes uh, the Rev Up series in Summerlin. It's closing the sale and creating clients for life. Jeff is the instructor on that. Um, you can probably sit here and listen to him in Summerlin. No. <laughs> Jeff talks loud. <laughs> and then Monday evening is Financing Sale Mortgage Basics. Uh, that's via Zoom only. This one is at the Summerlin office. Uh, Monday is via Zoom only. And then we start all over again. Uh, module 1, Intro to Rev Up uh, and Goals planning and system, and that's going to, when we start all over again, it's going to be here in this office. So module one next Wednesday, module two next Friday, establishing your brand and developing your farm again. These are here in this office and via Zoom. All right, who signed up for Zelle? Who's, who's received money through Zelle so far for your commission checks? So now you can get your commission checks through Zelle. Uh, you got to sign up. There's flyers back there. You just scan the uh, QR code if your banking institution already has Zelle. Um, it's really easy. Even if your banking institution, dang, another blast from the past. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is Joseph. Hi, Joseph. <laughs> Joseph lost a lot of weight. How much? 45 pounds. Wow. Wow. Awesome. Keto, baby. Keto. What's that? Keto? Keto. Yeah. Well, it works. It works. So anyway, you can get your commission checks through Zelle now. I would say even if your banking institution does not have Zelle built in, um, Zelle has an app. And you can just still do it uh, uh, through your banking institution. All right. So we are uh, collecting water. Through August 15th, and this is for hydrating the homeless. You know, it's not as hot out there as it has been, but it's still plenty hot, and it's going to just get hotter. So uh, our goal is 4,000 bottles. We have a week and a half to collect. I think we're up to about 1,000 bottles right now. You can see them over there. Um, 
let's we got we got a week and a half to get three thousand bottles, um, which seems daunting, but we can do it. Um, if so, I've been going every Friday to pick up ten cases. Um, so most of the you know, going to be. But but uh, if anyone wants to donate money, I'll go down and and, and buy the water uh, for you. So um, you know it's hot out there. And they're homeless, so let's, let's help them out. My my information uh, to put on the uh, contracts. All right, who likes to bowl? So we're going to do cosmic bowling. It's going to be on a Friday evening, Friday, August 26th at 6 p.m. Uh, I think it costs, yeah, there's a, a fee of $15. Um, that will be required at least a couple of days prior to um, the actual event. Let's, let's get a bunch of people. Um, I'm, I'm going. Where are they? At. I don't know. <laughs> 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 uh, I don't remember the name of the place, but it's where, where uh, sunset turns into sunset. It's, oh, okay. it's fire, fire, wild, fire. Wild, fire. Wild, fire. wild fire. Wild fire. Wild fire. Yeah, in, in Henderson. All right, so who's going to go? It'll be fun. Uh, okay, August 9th, uh, right here in this room, Justin Taylor, uh, Fun Rock title. Um, he's flying in from uh, Arizona, that's where he's based out of, and he's going to be teaching us TikTok for real estate professionals. Um, there's a lot of people that are uh, in the real estate industry that are using TikTok to actually uh, you know, generate a buzz and generate some business. So he's gonna go over uh, how to do it. Uh, he says, bring your phone charged, and hopefully you have TikTok on your phone. All right? That, so again, that is August 9th, <laughs> 1 to 2, right here. We get him twice that this month. You know that, right? Live. When, when else? The 18th. Google Business. Okay. Google Business Pages. Yeah. When is he's going to be live just because he's doing other meetings in town. But he's going to do the 1 to 2 here live. And on Zoom. Okay. Yeah. 18, one to two. Justin Taylor is uh, an amazing uh, addition in that he does all the trading for uh, Rock Title and Realty One. He, he trades on all of our tools and technology, and we'll show it. Uh, we have a schedule up here. We'll show when uh, both of those should come to. Uh, Thursdays, one to two. So every Thursday, one to two, it's on Zoom, but he's going to be here live. This is the ninth. The ninth is uh, Tuesday. Yep. So this one is that's the ninth. Tuesday. This is a special. This one for the ninth is like okay. a special live in person here in the Southwest you guys. All right. Uh, last Friday of every month we do our happy hour. Um, last Friday was probably what do you think? Probably one of our best happy hours. You guys say that every time. I know. <laughs> Come on, it really was. <laughs> Who was all there on Friday? It was actually a big group yeah. last Friday, yeah. so was, that was fun. It was a yeah. good group, it was a fun group. Yeah. Hey, we have fun. Yeah. And there may be a little alcohol. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> All right, every Friday is Team Spirit Friday, where we uh, wear our favorite team's jersey. We are in baseball season. However, you don't have to wear baseball. You can wear football. You can wear uh, Golden Knights. I mean, if you're going to wear hockey, it better be Golden Knights. Um, you can wear, you know, you can wear whatever you want. If you're, you know, if you're a, a, a Sharks fan, you probably get stoned. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is your weekly reminder about transaction desk is going away. So I I'll check to make sure, but I believe it's September 12th. We will no longer have transaction desk. And uh, LVR is moving to Remind. However, Remind is getting a lot of, a lot of negative reviews. I don't like it. You don't? You don't like it, yeah, yeah. And that's that's what I'm hearing all over. I don't like it. It's just so easy to use. Yeah. So uh, we are going to Sky Slope Forums. 
And so sky slope forms, it's not in our sky slope yet, but it will be very, very soon. I'm guessing uh, within the next week it will be in there. Um, so it's really easy. You go into sky slope and up to the top right, there's a little thing that says apps. You click on that. Um, I, I check every day, it's not there yet. I mean, the app is there, but our GLVAR forms are, uh, is not an option yet. Um, so I got the um, notification that, that they have uploaded all the GLVR forms, and now they're working on uh, the Real T1 forms. So it should not be long now. So, so will um, we be able to send them an e-sign off of there? Yeah. Yeah. So as opposed to going to the transaction desk or remind, you know, doing everything there, setting it out for signatures from there, and then uploading it to Skyslope, you're going to already have it in Skyslope because you're created in Skyslope. You're going to send for digital signatures in Skyslope, and then you can upload your Skyslope. We'll so will everything else be moved over too? Can we move everything from transaction to Skyslope? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, we're and we're going to be doing a, a, a lot. I almost said shitload. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of training. I believe you did. Um, oh, I did. <laughs> Oops. Thanks for catching me. Um, yeah, we're going to do a lot of training on it. Just, uh, just, just, Justin Taylor, uh, he, uh, they rolled it out in Arizona a couple of months ago, and he did all the training there. So he'll be doing live training for it. He'll be doing Zoom training for it. We'll have recorded videos for it. So uh, be prepared. It's coming really soon. Do you know if we're going to be able to, you know, send out forms and, uh, you know, because you have a potential listing, you set up all the forms, you have it ready for your meeting. It doesn't go through. Do we? In other words, do we have to have a transaction completely set up, or can we just pull standalone forms and then say turn this into a transaction? You know what, Joseph? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing yes, right. but I, I'm pretty sure you, you probably can. Yeah. So but we'll find out soon, won't we? So the Anything better than Rima? Sky slope are not ours. I've received a couple emails. Emails from Skyslope saying what? Something about training. Not a, not and not oh, regarding not Skyslope forms yet. Yeah, yeah. we don't have yeah. one yet. And uh, if you guys, um, you know, have a lot of transactions on transaction desk, make sure you have a way right now to archive it. Um, I don't know who's teaching the training for. I know um, Krista was doing that training to save it because. Once transaction desk goes away, what happens to all of your forms that's already there? So make sure you find a way to archive all of those now so that you don't lose them. I know you can that. move them from transaction desk to remind. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to move them from transaction desk to Skyslope. Yeah. Okay. All right, Shawnee, what's going on in the mortgage world? Good morning, Shawnee. <laughs> <laughs> but they've improved lately. Yeah. Haven't they? Do you face any challenges with buyers? You know, are they still uh, worried about the rates? Did you guys mention about the seven one nine mm -hmm. that we have three to one buy down program? Yes. Yes. And by the way, uh, our president of Epic Lending, he will be here next Thursday. So if you have any concerns or any uh, you know suggestions that how we can improve lending uh, up from our part. You can be here and you can tell, you know, I know Emily has some questions that he, she's going to tell him. If you have anything, just please come and uh, meet him next Thursday. Uh, he is going to be here and do a presentation on 3 to one buy down. So it's a great opportunity to meet him and tell your concerns and talk, talk about lending, you know, whatever the challenges that you are facing that, uh, you know, we can fix or we can help. Uh, we can come up with any flyers or marketing materials. We can help you. Okay, so be here next Thursday. He's going to be here and do a presentation on three to one by down. Awesome. Okay, thank you. Uh, make sure that you reach out to Shawnee for all of your lending yes. needs, even if yeah, uh, even just use her as a 
resource. Um, I'm, I'm asking her questions all the time about the uh, the, the uh, mortgage market, and, and uh, she's a, a great resource. And uh, when you're meeting with buyers, um, Shawnee would be more than happy uh, to meet with them as well and get a free quote. Okay. All right. We have Felicia and Stephanie from Rock Title. Good morning, guys. Good morning. All right. So. Rock University, and I think you want to talk about Rockham again, really quick, right? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Rockham, Rockham, right? Well, let's talk about Rock University. Okay, who is a VIP? A Rock University VIP? You I guys. Would, I would so, like to think I yeah. Who's <laughs> actually who's, who's registered? Yeah. Who's registered? Yeah. Registered. Who's registered on OneRockStars.com? Yeah. Okay. What is it again? Okay. So I'm gonna write them on, you wanna talk, and I'll write them on the, on the word So OneRockStars.com is our platform that uh, provides training for two different um, ideas. I don't know how to describe them, sorry. Uh, one Rockstars gives you access to, on Mondays from one to two o'clock, it gives training on a lot of the Realty One technology platforms that we use every day, or that we encourage you to use every day, right? And then Rock University is on Thursdays from one to two, and that's marketing tips and tricks and training. So TikTok, Instagram, uh, Google profiles, a lot of marketing, but not tailored to the Realty One platforms. So on Monday, One Rock Stars, you can go on. Now, if you are not available at one to two o'clock on either Monday or Thursday, but you really wanted to see that class, it's uploaded into the video library. So we need a VIP, which is really just registering. You then have, that's all you gotta do, is register. <laughs> There's not like a special thing for VIP. You just have to register, but you would click on that to then see all of the library. And in that library are all the previous classes that were done. And then if you will see the schedule for the new classes that are coming. And that's why, VIP access. I think, I think why, <laughs> Um, I think why we really want you guys to get on there is like today is a great example in this changing market, right? So Justin's going to be talking about, I want to talk on Zoom, business planning. Usually we don't start talking about business planning in our business closer to the end of the year, but we're going to kick it off and be a step uh, for be proactive with it. So he's going to start talking about business planning and it's going to really reflect on the change in the market and how to start doing or adding some things to your business plan that we can help you with. So you that is... Have Every Thursday at, uh, at one o'clock, and and uh, Felicia, are we still going to be having it live here? Yes, every Thursday I've been putting it live here. Um, love that every we've had a pretty good turnout. It's fun. I was kind of thinking of maybe bringing in some pizzas today. Um, just ready to have pizza. <laughs> Uh, but I would love for you guys to try to, you know, even if you, even if you can just block out that one hour on Thursdays, I would love to have you guys here live. Um, it is on Zoom, but again, we're going to be lucky twice this month to have Justin here live. So the 8th, the 9th, and the 18th. Yeah, he's um, really good. If you guys haven't seen yeah. Justin teach, he's yeah. really good. Yeah. Yep. Um, can I, know, can oh. I point out one thing? Yep. Just with these two websites here, you do not have to register for both. You only need to register for one, which is one rockstars.com. You then have access to both. If I go to, I don't know, Remax down the road, hypothetically, they can log on to Rock University only. They too have access to this training. But you at Realty One Group, you have access to university as well as one rockstars. I just write them both because I know you're going to see both, especially on the closed Facebook page. You're going to see Rock University. You're going to see Correct. one rock star. So that's why we write both down. And here's the schedules for both of them. Right. Why does it say Thursday at 10? One. Um, 10 to so one. The one orientation? Actually, so they do an or Justin does an orientation every okay. Thursday for the new agents. Okay. So that, Which is good for anyone, actually. It doesn't have to be necessarily new agents. Yeah. Not good for us. There's good takeaway. Even if we've been in this business for 20 years, there's good takeaways out of all of it. So. Don't, I don't want them not coming to our meetings. Right, that's right, that's right. So again, I just want to recap really quick on Rock University. We've got the 18th, which is going to be your Google business page and profile and maximizing. What time is that? Getting your reviews. Uh, that will be from one to two, live here in this room. And then on the 9th is your TikTok 
live special training. I think it's just special for this office, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So very cool. Um, I am going to be adding a couple separate classes to the calendar soon. Stephanie, we're going to talk about that. I know Breakthrough Broker, and who uses Breakthrough Broker? Who knows about Breakthrough Broker? So, if okay, you, if that's you good. don't know about it, you don't use it, you need to. There is a lot of new uh, stuff that has come out on Breakthrough Broker. I would love to be able to show it, teach it. We can watch webinars. Um, but look at your trending tab on the left. Breakthrough Broker is really, bless you, is coming out with some amazing things. So, make sure if you're not signed up, reach out to us. We'll pair you with your free account through. Uh, I was going to say Realty One. Yeah, that was the first time in five years I would have ever done that <laughs> through Rough Title. Um, so make sure you have a Breakthrough Broker account. And I'm going to do a separate class on that. And then we've got a couple of new tools coming, but we're going to announce the class to roll those out and teach them and download them and all that shortly. Any escrow questions for Brad? Everybody know Brad Moraine? Hey, Brad. How awesome to have like an amazing escrow officer on hand. I would escrow officer you extraordinary. Yeah, right that's there. right. I always here on Thursdays. We appreciate your time because we know that that's very rare that escrow can get away from their desk. So, any escrow questions? He at brings all? his desk with him. That's right. <laughs> so that's right. Anything at all? Even if even if we don't have the escrow, we're, we're here to help. Uh, any concerns, questions? Okay. All right, guys. Have a great rest of your week. See you, everybody. Thank you. Did anybody download the document yet from last week? Just real quick. Did anyone download the document that I talked about last week? The what? Zocum? Yeah. 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 We'll do that next time. All right. That's the new part of that. That's the little carrot dangling. <laughs> but real quick, yeah. what is Zocum? Okay, uh, now you want to. No, no, no. Now, yeah, it's, it's an app, it's an app for uh, EMD uh, deposits. It's an app for uh, secure yes. mobile deposits in the EMD for immediate acceptance to the escrow. Your officer. clients, your buyer clients will be able to Good. make their earnest oh, money deposit with an app. That's it. That's, That's the team. That's all that it is. That's the team. <laughs> all right, stats. Let's talk about stats, Emily. <coughs> now, does everybody know who I, I introduce her every single week? But there's some that haven't been here in a little while. Uh, <laughs> Emily is our new sales manager, and she's an amazing addition to our uh, to our team here. So she's going to be talking stats. How many of you have you been following? How many of you have been following the numbers? Actually, how many homes are coming in the market? How many uh, homes are? Um, how long the homes are staying in the market? And how many are getting price decrease? So the active listings that we have, again, we go back to six months, seven months. From January, we were having, what, 2,900 to 3,000 homes in the market. Now we're up to 9,554. This was yesterday, okay? When will we bring 10,000? <laughs> So um, days on the market, very important, 31 days right now. That's the median days on the market. But if you click on the matrix, um, it'll tell you 49 days actually is average days. That number so was down to six at one point. Okay, so if you guys, if you just see this every now and then, the numbers will not really make sense. But if you look at, um, you know, the numbers on a week by week basis, you will be surprised at how quickly it's changing. And um, active listings, this one, this one's overall with condos and townhomes. This one is just a single family, you know, um, homes. But look at this. So we were doing price decrease numbers just within seven days usually. Okay, so just to give you a quick example, in January 2nd, our price decrease was 89. January 2nd, 89 price decrease. In April, we had 195. June 5th, we had 648. And now look at the price decrease, 1,885 within seven days. For the total price decrease of all of the active homes on market, we went from, okay, we have 9,554 9, active. Right now, overall, of all of those listings, 44.59 had a price decrease. What does that tell you? Almost 50% of homes are getting adjusted in price. So we're gonna go through later on how to comp it, 
um, if you guys want to see. But I'm, I'm curious though. So it's three and a half months in inventory. We've got almost 3,000 under contract right now as we speak. But how many of you know how to pull this out of your matrix? Because this one, I, you know, it's we can get this out of, you know, when we're comping our properties and we're looking at, how many of you know how to do that? Just write the search bar down. Okay. Do you guys want to learn how to do yeah. that? Yeah. So, okay, so maybe in a, another class, I can teach you guys how to do this because then I think it's really, really important to know rather than like sometimes, you know, if you miss the office meeting, then you don't get these numbers. But if you know how to do it and you have a listing appointment for that day, this comes in, I think, very, very helpful because then you can educate your clients on what's happening. Also, who would like to have something like this that you can share on your social media? Me, I was gonna post it. Okay. Let's show them how to do that. Really yes, yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> So this one, I actually, um, we did this who, last week. Who was here last week? Who was here last week? Okay. <laughs> oh, you are? Good, I love it. All right, so when you go into your one login, go into one design. It's all new, one design. They've completely revamped it and they have just a ton, I almost said that other two words again, a, a lot of uh, templates in here. So if you go into digital templates here, this is all digital stuff that you could use on your social media, you come right here to... Market updates. Market updates. Yep. And there it is. Where would you go to after one login? Oh my God! I'm so sorry. Creative design. Creative design. All right. So one login. You're in your one login. Everyone knows how to get here, right? Yeah. We don't have those on ours. Which one? Are you in your one login? Oh, you got one login. Make sure you go to everything. There. So um, click on one design, and that's going to get you here. And so there's digital uh, and there's print stuff in here. So you can see which is the one that you uh, you just used. Yeah, so we use, I use the very right this on the this top. One. Yep. And you, you notice I removed the Monday. You can customize this however you want, um, but it, at least it's already there. Yep. If you wanna just fill in the blanks, you can do that too. Um, but yeah, last week I think we did a different template. I think it's the yeah. second row on the left where you can put your picture and it's super easy to use. So this is an amazing platform. Um, so you just create it, put the numbers in there and you can sub, uh, share it to all your social media. Okay. All right, anything else about stats? Anyone have any questions regarding stats? Look at, uh, I always like looking at the uh, month's inventory. It's up to 3.6. You guys remember, we go over this every single week. Remember what it got down to at one point? Point, point Six eight. Months. It was point eight. Point eight was the lowest that we reported it here. Now it's at 3.6. It just continues to go up. So we're still really in somewhat of a seller's market. Not like the seller's market we are in before, but we've trans we're transitioning into a normalized market. And then once we get above five, um, that's when we get into the buyer's market. It's just all about supply and demand. You know, when, when the supply is up, the demand is, is down, it's a buyer's market. When the supply is down and, and the, uh, the demand is up, that's a seller's market. So it's just, you know, typical supply and demand. Any questions on? Talking about price de uh, prices decreasing, what are you seeing as far as how far they're decreasing? So the, the question was, what are we seeing as far as uh, price decreasing? So these are price decreases of active listings. It has nothing to do with the, the, uh, the values going down. We're seeing values go down, but it's slight. 
you know, it's maybe a couple it's thousand dollars. It's called agents to learn how to price their okay. properties now. What's that? Well, a few months ago, you didn't have to know how to price a property. Yeah, that's what we're going to talk about. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Joseph says a few months ago, you didn't have to know how to price a property. You can throw it up at any price, and it'll sell, and usually sell for more than you added. Last well, July, I, I picked the highest number I thought, added yeah. 10 grand, and it still went 15. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah now, now you've, you've, you've got to know how to price it. And then you got to know how to sell it to your seller. Exactly. That, that's the right price. I think that's the hardest part is how do you sell it to your yeah. seller? Because us pricing it, that's the behind the scenes, right? But then how do you present it to your seller? Well, they will accept yeah. the new price. I think that's where the tough um, part comes in. And that comes with you've got to know your numbers. You have to know your numbers so that, uh, again, you know, you got to educate yourself that, so that you can educate. Yeah. Your, uh, your clients. I was in a CE class yesterday, Key Realty, mm -hmm. on the Zoom, and there was, I don't know who the guy worked for, what KB homes, homes, but they said that KB reduced their home price by $40,000. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. yes. But he didn't say which KB tractor where that wow. was at. Richmond <laughs> had it up to $50,000. I just, because um, I get the emails. This is what I would suggest to everybody. Um, get into, uh, if, if you work in specific areas, like for instance, if you're around here in Summerlin, or um, Southwest, and you see all these builders, sign up on their email list even if you don't have clients looking right now. And I do that personally because I wanna know every week what their quick move in homes are going for. And so I get a report from Beezer saying, Emily, we've got, you know, we're offering four and a half percent commission on these quick move in homes. On, we've got these price reductions for these homes. And you will see like how the price difference is going week after week. So it's a great information for you and it's a great information to pass on to your clients because if they were interested, say, last year on the, these homes and they couldn't get in, these homes are now adjusting and they're offering, and, and the offers for incentives changes every week for the builder. So if you've got the information a week or two ago, that could change already this time. So put yourself on their email list it's going to help you later on. Builders reducing their prices is kind of a last resort for them. They offer all sorts of incentives first before reducing the prices. Uh, so what's uh, happening oh, to the ones that are in contract? So someone's in contract and now KB just reduced what? So they <laughs> stay in contract. <laughs> oh, no. in contract. Let's just so say bad. somebody was in contract <laughs> on a Pulte home in the <laughs> Northwest. <laughs> They've been in contract since February. And you got a tip from somebody, so you call. <laughs> so, I'm in contract on a new home. So, have they reduced already? No, no. But they haven't, okay, so they haven't reduced their, their base prices there yet, um, but they're offering crazy incentives, like 6% toward closing costs, and, and they've always paid the 3% commission. Um, but so yeah, I only got two percent of closing costs. However, right. how do you how do you do that with our clients, right? So if we have a client that's mm -hmm. been in escrow for say six to eight months and their house is not built, but then you know they're going to offer like a four percent interest rate on the new ones that are coming in. How do you now justify that, mm -hmm. right? The way you justify it is six to eight months ago, they were 100,000 less than what they are still right now. So yeah. even if they decrease the price 30 to $40,000, the price usually is still more than what it was when they came into contract. So my base price was 545 when I went under contract. Right. The base price out there now is almost 645. So, oh. you know, so. I, and, and I wasn't, uh, you know, expecting them as it was going up, is it 650? Uh, uh, I wasn't, wasn't expecting them to say, hey, price has gone up. I want you to pay the most. The, That's yeah. true. And now that I guess worst case scenario, scenario you can go it, buy a car at the end and not qualify. <laughs> 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 How do you get your deposit back, right? Oh, I got it back. I can make you buy a car. All right, let's, uh, <laughs> let's do. Um,
the listening presentation, and more importantly, the comping of the homes. I'll sit here. So I'll be, I'll sit here. And you guys, how, how do we come off this home? How far back do we go? What do you guys think? How far back do we go now? Six months? Because if you're calling, if you have a new list, I can't. Yeah, if you have, if you have um, a listing coming up and then they say, okay, Emily, what's, you know, how, how are we going to price these homes now? Because if you comp it from the last, for the last three months, what are those prices going to give you? Those are the overinflated price because people were like going above asking price, right? I mean, a lot of them were like above list and still getting multiple offers, no appraisal whatsoever. So well, the last three Well, three months would take us back to going into contract in April when the big push was the end of February when interest rates started to rise. So right. Generally, April is post bump and the prices aren't as ridiculous. Aren't as ridiculous, but still, if you price them within that last three months, whether April, May, June, because that's the 90 days, right? 90 days. So it's still going to give you the comp for April, May, and June, right? So the last three sales usually would be like the latest sale, which is still very high. So now we go back to, and really, I mean, when we're comping properties and then we're, when we're presenting it to our clients, it's really a matter of how do we, you know, how do we present it to them? Because if you price it high, what's going to happen? 46% of our listings right now are what? Really? Getting adjusted anyways. So, but at the end of the day, on presenting it to the client, you know, you can kind of give them the option of the, uh, you know, the price to sell and then the median price, which is what it's comping for, you know, what their neighbor sold in the last three months, or, you know, the high price where they think their house is still worth right now based on the peak of the price. So it's up to you on how you're gonna present that. But for the sake of comping right now, based on the numbers that we're seeing, and I'm interviewing, you know, some agents on how far back they're going. Actually, I was in Summerlin yesterday and I taught a class there for the mentees and um, one of the agents in Summerlin said she's going back a year, you know, to show the, the price difference of what it was a year ago versus the peak of the market and then how many price adjustments we're seeing today. So it, it really is up to you um, to see how far back you go. And, and to be honest, it's also case by case basis because if you're comping a condo, and the condos in that particular neighborhood are still selling the same way as it was a month or two ago, then we don't really need to adjust that, right? Because if they are selling, if they were selling for 270 like a month ago and we've got, you know, like homes right or uh, condos right now that are still selling within the two weeks at 270, do we really need to lower it that down? No, right? No, because they're still selling because we still have demand for them. But if you are pricing like the smaller homes and they are pricing at say 500,000 a month or two ago, now they've been in the market for 30 to 90 days and you're comping a new property, then I think that one, you know, will need to get a revisit and say, I think we need to comp these homes slower if we wanna sell them. So before you get into the price adjustments of listing, I think it's important for us to know again, our numbers so that when we are sitting with our sellers nowadays, we can show them, we can price it at this much, but look at the price decrease that's happening and look at the days on market for these homes. They're not moving. So how far do we wanna, do we wanna chase the market? Because that's what a lot of these sellers are doing now. We're chasing the market, you know, and as we wait longer, then it sits in the market, then they just keep slashing the price down when we could have already priced it two months ago at a certain price for it to just sell and still get the highest offer for them. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? So let's go into, so I'm just gonna pick, um, so when we're copying, you guys already know, you've already checked your um, tax records and then you, we don't have to do the coming soon. We 
just do the sold because we are comping. I'm going back 220 days at least now, okay? And you can go as far back as you want. Like I said, you know, some agents, they are showing their sellers as far back as one year because what happened one, you know, within the last 12 months, we had such price increase to unbelievable amounts where appraisal almost didn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. So now let's, let's just show for this particular neighborhood, 2014. Let's do a quarter mile for now, and then we're going to expand it to half a mile later. So 35. Okay, 35. Let's see what the results are. And so when you're here, um, know that I, I'm pretty sure you guys already know that anytime there is like an arrow, you can kind of uh, play around to see. This one, I don't show an arrow, but you see how the days on market changes? right here on the active. So when I am comping properties, I play around with these things because at first you want to see how many within a quarter mile are in that neighborhood, how many sold, right? This particular property is 1768 square feet and it's right there. It's at 499 to 495. This one is new at 499. I believe some of these homes yesterday I was seeing, they were going from 550 all the way down to 485 already and they're still in the market okay some of them um right here on the days on market look at this this is just within a quarter of a mile sometimes it's a tenant in there sometimes it's a tenant i think this one could be a probate i think this is a probate no it's vacant wow okay so i think this is five plus community yeah this one is but um, just to give you an example of how many days they are in the market already. Okay, so when you, you, when you are comping a property in a neighborhood and you notice that these numbers are just high and they're not moving, then check the pricing and then check how much price decrease they have because that will give you an indication if that particular neighborhood that you're going to list is you know very active still selling there are still neighborhoods they say like for instance in green valley certain neighborhoods that will still get multiple offers so it's it's a case by case but overall in our market you know based on these numbers 46 percent has had price decrease so you want to try and avoid that because if you already have if you start with a very high number already, the likelihood of you doing a major price adjustment to catch the market will be very difficult with your seller. Whereas if you already know coming in that this is the number that would properly, you know, put us in a sell position, if you have to adjust that later on, it'll still be easier because you all you didn't start from the very, very top. Does that make sense? Is that mainly CICs that are holding strong with their price, you think? Well, Typically. I think, no, I think it's just sellers. Yeah, because, you know, what happens is that they look on Zillow and then they get all these estimates and these estimates are getting from just the algorithm of the recent sales, yeah. but, you know, they're, they're not um, really priced well. Or, like, they know that their neighbor a month or two ago just sold for top dollars, but those actually were given, those escrows, you know, were accepted, what, March, April? Which was still pretty high price, right? So, um, right now we're gonna go, those are just for the half. Quarter mile, we're on 1768 square feet. Look at this, suddenly, it's got a lot more now, right? And look at, um, let me see, how many do we have? 102, so let's do this. I'm gonna remove, um, for the sake of this, I'm just gonna do, say, 1,400 to 1,900 square feet because ours is 1,700 square feet. days on market as you go down. This is brand new right here. 
but look at the days on market on your active here. So I think that's why it's very important to look at these. And then when you do the active um, approximate living space, I don't know why I do this one. There you go. So if you click on the approximate living area here, it'll tell you all of the 1425 square feet are right here. That's how much they have in the inventory as far as the active. The sold for that particular floor plan. This area has three different floor plans that I'm seeing at least. The 1596 are there. They go from 450 all the way to 518. The 518 asking has been in the market for 100 days. The 439, I believe, I think this one is um, very low, but then that one is actually, uh, one of them is a probate. <coughs> and then if you go to the one that you're looking at, at 1,700 square feet, 1,768, these are all the 1,768, and they go from around there. This one is brand new. Again, they're pricing this at the price that is high. Um, the actual price, I think, if I was to list this today, would probably be about 445 because even the 469 right there is 55 days on market okay and you've got the 509,000 here 56 days on market so you know I think when we're comping now we have to just work a little harder on really you know looking at what's available as far as data because when we do that then we can better inform our clients and then you can do this through your CMA um, you know, I do a quick CMA on that and then it just, you know, play around with these arrows because sometimes it gets all jagged. You've got a mix of um, all these different sizes of homes. But also here on the, act, um, on the closing, you can click on that and look, it tells you how much they were selling from December all the way to the very recent, right? So the most recent closing, we've got 485 for the 1768. Okay. So, again, it just depends on your particular neighborhood. And then make sure you guys play around with this thing um, because, you know, the better informed you are, the easier it is for you to speak to your clients about pricing right now, which is very, very important because then if, you're, if your listing sits there for a long time and you know eventually it just makes it harder and harder to ask for price adjustments because then they're gonna say, well, you told me my, my house is worth 500,000, then how do we bring it down? You know, now if they still want to list it at 500,000 and you still want to take the listing at 500,000 because hopefully eventually that they do lower the price or something happens and we get a lower interest rate and the buyers come back, you know, then that's okay, right? But then if you don't and it sits in the market, then how do you have that conversation with your client that we're bringing it down 60,000 below what our initial price is? A question I wonder if we're going to see a change you know with pools they passed that for I think it's September mm -hmm. the pools are going to be what 600 square it's square still square pretty feet. big though yeah, it's still big. it's still is pretty it? big because mine is like a 15 by 35 and it's it's a pretty big swimming pool so I think it just depends if they want like the Olympic <coughs> size kind of like massive swimming oh. pools then that's when it kind of said it would only affect about 25% of the pool yeah which is basically just a luxury home. Right. right. So, so it's, it's going to become a commodity in luxury homes, or yeah. they're going to build two pools. Right. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, so, <laughs> yeah. But um, I hope by 35 is still like 500 Huge. square feet. Huge. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It is still so a 600 very big. square feet pool. It's a decent sized pool. Oh, so yeah. So, what about apartments and all of that? They Did bypass that, all that? Yeah, that's only for single family. family. Yep. Yeah. So, so here, yeah, so that's where we're at. Um, do you guys have any questions at all? Again, this is a case-by-case -case basis. We're not saying that every home should be lowered. Um, this one is just when you are comping, just kind of pay attention to the things on market on the particular neighborhood. If it is, like I said, a condo and they are still moving like crazy, you know, I follow one of these condo complex 
and um, every time they have a listing, it goes and you know sells pretty quickly. So they're not raising the prices in that neighborhood. So it's been staying between 250 and 270, and it sells. So those, you know, we keep around that price. We don't like discount them or lower the price highly. But on neighborhoods like this, like this one is a, you know, 55 and older community. You know, those that were selling for 500, 525 a few months ago is now not really moving. So just just be aware of that. Any questions? Anybody have uh, any tips uh, of, that they're using in uh, getting homes valued and, and uh, doing comps? RPR. 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 Yeah, it's really low though on those. Yeah. Well, no, but you have, to, you have to use the sales comparative analysis and adjust your comps. I have, properly. I've done that, but just like, Sometimes it's really low. I don't know. Lisa. And I've actually ordered appraisals on mine. Mm -hmm. I have an appraiser I've used, and I've paid for it for my seller. Just, you know, it's taken about three weeks, but I've actually ordered and paid for an appraisal. That way, my seller is seen from, you know, a professional side, not me, and it's always a range. How much does the uh, appraiser charge? I think it was about, the last one I did was, I think it was about 350. But to me, it's well worth it. I mean, like I said, I paid for it for my seller, and I tell him, you know, um, you know, we don't, we don't know, you know, with the market, let's see, let's get a professional opinion on this. And then they get a copy of it, I get a copy of it, and we go from there. Because ultimately, the seller, prices their home. You know, they already know that right. number, they're gonna price it. Sure. Exactly. But my only thing on that, on the appraisals, um, like I've done that before, um, but then right now the appraisers are gonna go usually, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but they go at least on the last three sale in a neighborhood, right? Mm -hmm. So if they have the last three sale and they are at like, for instance, in this neighborhood, and they price it at 500 and we already know that these 500 even though it's worth 500 you know right now and three months ago but if these homes are not moving then it just kind of makes it harder because then the seller would think okay well the appraiser said it's 500 and now we're back again to explaining okay we know that it can go even at 525 on a very busy market when interest rates were like at three percent but now because buyers are paying more you know then they're um what if they were approved at five hundred thousand dollars before what are they what can they buy now for that same monthly payment um versus before right if they're paying five and a half percent now how much more is that so that means from 500,000, now they're looking at maybe like a $400,000 home, whatever that number is, okay? So we kinda, so when we are doing um, our listing presentations now, I think we only not just look at just the comps, but also we put ourselves, and we have our sellers put ourselves themselves into the buyer standpoint. So if, Mr. and Ms. Seller, if you are, you know, buying a $500,000 home, are you only gonna look at the quarter of a mile? Or, or, or are you gonna look at all the other homes near that area that you want? Let's see what those homes are selling for, right? We have um, one of my mentee uh, came in the other day at the office and he's got a million dollar listing and they've lowered it down a couple times already. Initially, he was proposing that the price be $999,000. Well, they wanted a million thirty-five minimum on their home, and this was maybe like two months ago. They're at nine hundred ninety-nine thousand now, but you know their their house is not very modern. It's not really highly upgraded. It's semi-custom built, but still compared to the all the other homes that are in the area, you know, for a million dollars you can get so much newer home. So I told him. I, I want you to go to like the DR Horton near the area and the DR Hortons are going for $800,000 on half an acre, given wow. you'll have to landscape it, right? Mm -hmm. And for $850,000, you can get a brand new home and they pay for all of your closing costs. Oh, wow. How do you compete with that? If you have a million dollar listing that there's really nothing special to it, right? But the comp says the neighbor sold for 1.1. How do you comp that? 
And how do you explain that to them? Bring your clients to the new home sales area and see what they can get for a million dollars there. That way, you know, like you can kind of make them understand because it's not just this little bubble of homes now where we can put whatever price we want three months ago and now they're not selling. Yeah. So we have to work harder and we have to really, really educate ourselves so that we can present it to them, right? But at the end of the day, if they say it's worth a million dollars and you want to take the listing, it's worth a million dollars and we hope it sells, right? And if it doesn't, well, we try. But if it does sell eventually, great, right? So, yeah, yes. So, I think that's my spiel. <laughs> All right, isn't she amazing? Yes. All right, that's all we have for you today. Uh, remember, no matter how you slice it, greatness is a choice. Let's go out there and be great. Yes.